Welcome back, my friends, one more time to the fabulous West Coast out here in San Jose, California. Coltifornia, if you want to call it that. <laughs> it's been raining like a stink the last couple of days, which is awesome because now we have snow everywhere in Lake Tahoe, which means snowboarding, if I can find somebody to go with, snowboarding is going to happen. Yes, love it. And we need the rain here. My goodness, do we need the rain here. Dash, get on it, Rainbow Dash. You in the weather factory. Keep it coming. Thank you very much. I know I've given you bits to get me some water. I don't know what you're doing with it, Dash. <laughs> you're buying cider over at Sweet Apple Acres. That's what you've been doing. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Um, what are you drinking, Dustin? I'm, I'm drinking apple. I'm drinking cider. <laughs> I'm, oh. I, that's what I do. I drink cider a lot. Okay. I thought that was. I thought you were at another party than I was no, at. So. No, 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 no. We at this party right here. And of course, all you out there, listen to the. Beautiful voice of one Miss Iris Quinn. Hi! Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Doing great. Awesome. It's wonderful to have you here. Oh, uh, thank you for inviting me. I, yes. I've just been so thrilled to have sort of been on this kind of pony ride for the last uh, several months mm -hmm. since, uh, since the uh, equestrian... Uh, yes. show came out and it's just it's just been uh, it's been quite fun I I have to say it's a whole new world for me it's a whole new world well I'm sorry that was Disney <laughs> you sang Disney I'm not gonna sing Disney but there you go we'll talk about the singing later but <laughs> okay okay the first question we give everybody who comes on this show this is a standard thing okay what are some of the cartoons and comics you watched as a kid or are still watching to this day? Um, what I watched as a kid were the just the classic Bugs Bunny. Yes. <laughs> Rope Runner. Yes. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, of course, Mickey and Minnie. Oh, of course. Yes. Yep. I love Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Yes. Uh, oh, my goodness. I, I loved cartoons as a kid because... Um, you got a sensibility of um, of classical music mm -hmm. because all the all the scores to those old cartoons were were classical, if you Absolutely recall, were. or yeah, maybe you were. don't. I don't know. Oh, I do. Yeah, do yeah. I'm, 40, I'm 48 years old. Yes, I know all about those. Oh, yes. I'm older What's than opera you. doc? You know. Uh, no, but it was. Uh, I remember uh, going to a, a symphony concert mm -hmm. well into my adulthood, and uh, I just shut my eyes. Uh, when I was listening to the symphony, mm -hmm. and an entire cartoon came into my head, it and it just it just was that link from classical music to cartoons, and rather than just kind of being present and watching the musicians mm -hmm. play, yeah. I just shut my eyes and just an entire storyline, a whole a whole cartoon came into my head, and that's directly related to the fact that there was classical music with cartoons when I was a kid. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. That's the best way to actually listen to music is with the trash can headphones and closing your eyes. Yeah. And letting, letting your imagination give you all those wonderful pictures that the, the music is giving you. Absolutely. If, if, you kids, if you kids out there haven't put on a set of headphones with your favorite music and just laid down and meditated, you're missing mm -hmm. it. Okay? It's a wonderful time. Um, cool. So the first real question going on, um, you are more of an on-screen actor um, than a voice actor. Yes. Um, now, did you approach the Cinch character um, any differently in preparing for this role than, say, you would if you were on camera playing Cinch? Uh, I think, essentially, it's the same thing. The character is a character. When I did Cinch, I didn't have a picture of her. I'm not sure if uh, if it was a prelay situation where the character wasn't drawn, but I did all of my recording without seeing her. And when you sent me the link and mm -hmm. I actually ended up being able to see what my character looked like. I was quite surprised, actually. I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the, the voice that I chose for her, I based on um, a, a teacher that I had as a kid, Mrs. Bryanton. Oh. And, uh, and she just had what I would call a, a mid-Atlantic accent. It uh -huh. wasn't North American and it wasn't true British, but because she probably had elocution lessons when she was a child. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, so she was kind of like a combination of a Julia Child and uh, Mrs. Bryanton from my childhood yes. in terms of essence. And of course, Julia Child immediately brings Saturday Night Live to my, my brain. Uh -huh. you remember the Saturday Night Live skit that uh, Chevy Chase did? 
Absolutely. Like, oh, I've cut myself now. Ooh, I should have another drink. A little sherry for the wall. Yes. That's right. Yes, that's a hilarious bit. That was really good. <laughs> oh, um, everyone loves the hero in any story. Uh, we have we want to pull for the hero, but it is the villain that gives us a reason to root for said hero. Yes. Um, did you look to any other villain characters in building such as mannerisms or voice cadence? Uh, I didn't, but I know that with all of my acting, when I'm asked to play someone who is not particularly liked or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is particularly nice, um, I try to find something redeeming with them. There's always, there's always something that I ask, what drives this character? And in terms of playing um, Principal Cinch, she really, I think she loves her students, she loves her school, and um, I think she wants, she wants to win to keep the reputation of the school high, and that's really important to her. So that, that's, a, that's a goal that she wants for not only herself, but for her school. So those aren't really bad things. I think she kind of goes out of her way and steps on toes and other people and ponies to get what she wants. But, but I think if we can always look past all of that to to what might possibly be her motivation and what is re redeeming about her, mm -hmm. then I find we find humanity in her. Mm. Yes, that would be awesome. Because I, that's what I really like about a lot of characters, especially, you know, they've always a duality with a character. Like, yes. I, like there's a character in Milo Pony named Chrysalis. Chrysalis is the head of the changelings or the queen of the changelings. Uh -huh. And they need love to survive. That's how they feed on, right? She goes and invades Canterlot to get the love to feed her people, but gets smoked <laughs> by, uh. by the ponies. But everybody says she's evil. But was she really just invading Canterlot because they were desperate for, to survive? Yes. Okay. Yes. Duality of character. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a world where we, we have to... Um, kill even if it's a plant mm -hmm. to survive like everything on earth is is symbiotic mm -hmm. and so there's always a destruction of one for the survival of another yeah. so you're right that duality creates um huge moral conflict yes which makes a story more juicy and awesome sure yes um you've been in this game for a long time mm -hmm. yes, 95 or 4 or something like that if i think we're id imdb um now you own your own studio. Awesome. Impact yeah. Studio in Vancouver. Yeah. I, uh, I, what, what I do in my studio is um, I coach actors for their auditions. Mm -hmm. And I will tape their auditions. And if they can't be either live in the room here in Vancouver, mm -hmm. uh, if, if, they, they, if they need a, a tape sent to Los Angeles or New York, I tape their audition and send it off to casting. So I, I work very closely with a lot of actors here in Vancouver. That's cool. So uh, uh, the next part of that quite question was video, audio, just voice work, um, and of course coaching. So you're doing video work there and some voicing. Um, <laughs> speaking of coaching, yeah. what kinds of things, I, this has always interested me, what kind of things does an acting coach do for an actor? I mean, how do you, how do you break it down? Right? That, what, what does the coach give to the actor that they're paying for? Well, I think the most important thing when an actor comes into my studio, they've obviously, they've looked at the, the text and they come in prepared with their lines memorized. Um, but a coach can have an objective viewpoint on what it is they're saying. A lot, I, I find a lot of actors come in and, and they miss really small nuances in what it is they're saying. Um, for any given line, you could say it two or three different ways and it would mean totally different things. So an actor has got to really understand what the intention is between, be, uh, behind each one of the lines that they say. And um, it comes naturally for most actors, for sure. But um, every actor needs another actor to play off of and really get a sense of all the possibilities that you could bring to that role. It's just not kind of a straightforward read. Mm -hmm. 
just changing minor little things can make all the difference in the world with the impact of what that actor has to uh, portray. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, before you release a song or an album, you always have play it for the play it for uh, whoever you're making it for, like Warner Brothers or Capitol Records or something, and have those guys listen to it because you're so into your project that you're, you're not seeing it with clean eyes. Oh, absolutely. I right. mean, the musicians have, have producers in the studio, writers have editors in the reading rooms, mm -hmm. and, um, and actors just uh, it just need to, uh, directors or coaches to kind of just, you know, flesh out the, the most that can happen out of the tap. Cool. Awesome. Um, now we get to it. Now <laughs> what? we get to a great love of yours, as is mine. Cooking. Yeah. Yeah, cooking. You released. <laughs> you've released your own cookbook. Look at this thing. I Salvation. Did. Awesome cookbook. Spiral bound with hundreds, hundreds of recipes in this thing. Two hundred, um, baby. Two hundred. Oh, Two hundred <laughs> recipes. Um, how did you develop a love for all things culinary? I've been cooking since I can remember. Um, my mother. Um, she was kind of a meat and potatoes fifties housewife mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. mom. Uh, so her baking skills were incredible, her pies and her breads. Uh -huh. um, but being from Nova Scotia, we really were kind of a, a cold environment. So root vegetables were all. So it was pretty much mm -hmm. kind of a meat and potatoes kind of growing up. And when I moved to Toronto, um, I was exposed to world cuisines, oh, yeah. and I my taste buds just went absolutely crazy. <laughs> Boom. Boom! And uh, I just uh, I carried through with uh, with my love of, of cooking into um, doing some catering, uh, mm -hmm. and then it's just it's just escalated into wanting to put a book together. That's awesome. I spent seven years in a restaurant. Myself. Did you? Yeah. The, what, what, in the uh, which I, part? I, I did everything. Uh, we were in a four-star seafood restaurant, and I started as a busboy, yeah, as a dish dog. And which then I moved up to prep cook, then I moved up to salad prep, then I moved up to uh, hotline, then I ended up being the lead brunch prep, and the show brunch br uh, brunch cook out out on the Sunday. So wow. yeah, I did everything except for chef. So wow. it was uh, it was one of the, that's why I like to cook. That's why I love to cook, but. Cooking for one or one is not great. I used to cooking for seven hundred. So, <laughs> you know, it, it is. It's quite a shift. It's and quite it, a it, shift. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I like to do is, um, you can you can pretend you're cooking for seven hundred all the time, and it will make your life so much easier because you make your freezer your best friend, right? Yes. yes. And and just uh, you you cook once and eat five or six times yeah. from the. I, from I need to do food. that. I need to set set aside time on like my days off so I can make all my lunches for the week. Yeah. So just put them in my freezer. That's yeah. what I need to do. Yeah. So. It really, it saves so much time and it's so much healthier that, to eat that way too. Mm -hmm. Then you're not grabbing, you know, chocolate bars. Yeah. And... Be, yeah chocolate. I got chocolate over there. Um, so <laughs> out of all the things, what is your favorite ingredient to work with? Mm, boy. Oh, that's like Sophie's choice. Yes. Choosing a child. Yes. I, I don't know. I just, oh, Gosh. Squash is my favorite vegetable. Nice. I love squash. I think you like squash, too. I saw your I cooking do. segment. I do. my squash. Which was yes. fantastic, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it was great. Yes, I know. I have a similar recipe uh, in, in my cookbook to yours, and, uh, and I can see why you, you chose to put it on your, on your podcast for cooking, because really, it's yeah. how can you go wrong? You can't. You can't you go can't. wrong with that. Not at all. I need to do a new one. I haven't done a, a cooking video in a while, so I need to do a new one. And we'll pick something from my I book. Will. I think you know what we're gonna talk about. I, we talked about that before the show. I think I'm gonna do macaroons. It's simple. It's easy. It's awesome. And yeah. I love. I love. Mac oh my! Ask Cardwin. I love macaroons. They don't last in this house very long around me. So yeah, I think we'll do macaroons. Excellent. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. You know what I'm gonna do to you? Okay. This is what I'm gonna do to you. It's Iron oh. Chef time. Okay. Iron Chef. Yeah. And the chairman of Kitchen Stadium has just shown you the secret ingredient. Which is what? Steel cut oats and okay. apples. And apples. Yes, because it's the pony show, of course. So we eat oats and apples. <laughs> oats and apples. What would be your main Iron Chef dish using steel cut oats and apples? It would be absolutely apple crisp. <gasps> oh. 
Yeah, oh, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. Apple crisp. Yes. With a dollop of French vanilla ice cream. Oh, now you're talking oh. my language. Yes. Nice and warm out of oven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe a dash of cinnamon on top. Absolutely. Oh, or nutmeg. Yeah. And and butter, and, and you make butter. the streusel eat kind of oh, topping. Yeah. And, oh. yeah. And yeah. with the apples, yeah, I think it's kind of nice to have a little bit of sweet and tart all the time. So yes. I'd probably, probably throw in some, uh, I don't know, dry uh, cranberries, ah, maybe? Yes, that might be good. Very lovely. Christmassy, mm -hmm. you know? Christmassy. Might have to do that one, too. Because mm. macaroons are easy. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do some. <laughs> I'm getting evil ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so, cooking, awesome. Back to Principal Cinch. Okay. Okay, so, near the end of the movie, we get this epic Disney-style villain song. Yeah, I oh love it. Oh, my God. How much fun, nervous was it to lay that down? It was. I can't tell you how much fun it was. And as far as nervous goes, it was, I, I was like a kid in a candy store being able to sing because I've done musical theater oh, many cool. years ago. And um, when when I was cast to do the voice, mm -hmm. they asked me, well, do you sing? And I said, yes, I do. And they said, well, we get our California singers to do it most of the time, uh -huh. but we'll allow you to audition for it. Cool. And that's where the nerves came in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, but uh, David Ingram was the music director, and uh, I went and met with him privately for about an hour, mm -hmm. and he ran me through drills, and uh, he sent me a bed track, and I, I sang the song, and he said, that sounds good to me. I'm going to send it <laughs> off to Hasbro, and, and uh, I waited kind of um, a nail-biting two weeks, and then Hasbro came back and said, absolutely, That's you're going to sing the song. Daniel is awesome. Daniel is an awesome dude. Absolutely. Yeah. He was just an absolute joy to work with. So. I can't. I, I, I love him. He won't come on the show for reasons I don't know, but it's just he, every time I see him, he's just awesome. Yeah. Awesome guy to hang with. Um, let's see. Uh, as Twilight turns into Midnight Sparkle, we finally see Cinch take her leave. Uh huh. Not really acknowledging her part in all of this. Kind of like she doesn't even care about anything. <laughs> But her own little world. Yeah, she kind of sl slinks yeah. off. Would that be of. a fair assumption that if it's not part of her little world, making it, you know, that crystal prep wins, that she just doesn't want any part of it? You know, it's, it's sort of like, oh, my God, what did I do? And I'm out of here. Well, I'm, I'm hoping there's going to be a sequel where that can be answered. Yeah. Because I, I, I think there's something to her. I think there's something that... I'd like to, I'd like to know a little bit more about her than than just the friendship games mm -hmm. and the and the drive to win that. I know it was very prominent there, but I don't know. I just kind of imagine her um, sort of at home, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and she might be uh, uh, maybe just kind of a bit of a sad and lonely character. And, and I, you know, now that you now that you mentioned that, the thing that popped into my head is Eleanor Rigby. Ah! Eleanor Rigby, who keeps her a mask in the jar by the door. Ah, interesting. And that is the public persona of Cinch. Aha. Uh -huh. That she has to put on to do what she needs to do, but it's not really her. Yeah. Yeah. See where I'm going with that? I do. Yeah. I think we better give this storyline yeah. to, to the producer. Megan, Megan I've been telling you for years, I work cheap. Call me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on, McCarthy. Let's go. Yeah. We know each other. You know, just need to ring me up. Not a problem. Well, <sighs> I, I think you would just be the most amazing resource. I, yeah, I... well, they, they can't talk. They can't even listen to us because all of a sudden, you know, oh, we're copying the fandom. No. Uh, you well, know how that goes. Well, you know, so they should just maybe listen to some of their shows and sort of go Ooh. on the teamwork. Uh, uh, you never know. You never know. Um, <laughs> that brings us to the whole overarching reach of sort of this whole plot public school versus private school right um you cannot deny that this was an overreaching arc in the story mm -hmm. um tropes aside um do you have any opinion on the whole public versus private school thing uh i i think uh public school is the school of of reality and hard knocks 
and uh, private school, although I'm sure, I think it's probably easier to excel academically because you get more one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. but uh, it's all about excellence, you know, and that's, I think, what they, they were fighting for, mm -hmm. and in, in, in the games, um, that, that was the goal for both of them, and, and I think in, in many ways both of them excelled. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of, like, the, the private school uh, was portrayed as, um, you know, the mean girls and the bullying and the, you know, just ignoring and snobs and all of that sort of thing. But, um, but again, like, looking, looking beyond all of that, they're all... All, bottom line, they're all looking to excel and be the best they can be, and they have different ways of getting there. Yeah. And you can't you can't see the light without seeing the dark. Uh, you know, no, knowing what dark is. That that is true, and I I put it like this: you learn more from failure than you ever did from winning all the time. Oh, absolutely. And that's one thing in my studio when, when my clients come in, I say, you better dare to fail yeah. because um, I'm not interested in perfection at yeah. all. Yeah. And it's the only, only interesting things happen when there is, I don't know, just, just not the safety net there. Yeah. That's yeah. the only time you can be creative is, is when you, you just want to take the risks. I had, I had way more fun in my acting class when I did exactly what they didn't expect. Mm hmm because it was so much fun to do that it, it's like so I'm gonna tell you a little story okay in the acting class I took the final week we did it we had to do a, a cold read of an old TV commercial which was a uh, uh, fiber one yogurt you know okay. the whole twigs and sticks line that they mm -hmm. had in that and so everybody's doing it straight we're all supposed to be going through a Costco and taking our, our you know, sample from the guy that you see at Costco. And uh, everyone's doing it pretty straight. So I go up there with this girl who I know has a, a, a wickedly funny streak in her. And I, I whispered in her ear, I said, let's do it angry. And she goes, oh, yeah, 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 let's do it angry. So sure enough, I go up there, and, I'm, and it just as soon as we hit the stage, I just go, honey, look, I didn't know they sold Harley Davidson's at Costco. And she goes, can we go home now? <laughs> And I turn around, I said, yeah, I am getting kind of hungry. And we turn around and there's the guy saying, here, try this. He shoves it in our face. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What's, what's this? Oh, it's a new yogurt, Fiber One. Try it. And we, we both try it. And it's like, oh, it's kind of tasty. Yeah, kind of creamy. And he goes, and 20% of your daily fiber with no twigs and sticks. And I just jump him and goes, are you feeding my wife twigs and sticks? <laughs> and she goes, ew, and drops it. Goes, Come on, honey, let's get out of here. And the whole class was just laughing. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, playing, uh, all actors know that playing yeah. in opposites is where it's at, in, in whether it's comedy or, or playing serious. You, you, it's the element of surprise, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you, 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 what you presented in that class was not expected. And so the unexpected either triggers, it. it's going to trigger a emotion for mm -hmm. sure. The emotion is going to come up stronger than if you just play it safe. Yeah. And we, we did talk about this. Do you think, and we, we talked about this a little bit, do you think that Principal Cinch was a good nurturing authority figure in her past and that the pressure of winning the friendship games every year turned her into what she has become? Yes. There yes, you. I do. Very simple I answer. I do. Yep. Yep. Probably, I, she was probably, you know, when she first came got her first teaching job at Crystal Prep and she was like all bright eyed and bushy tailed and put mm -hmm. all the stuff on the walls like you know your first year teacher and all of that then became principal and all of a sudden friendship games every year and win 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 and all of a sudden we gotta win yeah yeah well it's it's pride definitely mm -hmm. came um, before the fall I mean she was she was proud of her school and she does not want to let go of that but I think like initially I think she did have the, the exuberance of, of wanting wanting to win without the viciousness of wanting to win. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the more she won, the more prideful mm -hmm. she got. Yeah. And of course we all know if you're if you get if, if pride be, become you know yeah. comes before the fall. Yep. For sure. And I think that's basically it, it, it trickle down economics of she's that way, therefore all her students are like that. And that's why you get sour sweet, and that's why you get indigo zap, and that's why you get all these girls that are 
hard edged because they want to win because the principal wants to win. Exactly. And then yeah. then see the 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 error of their ways when yeah. the world's about to end. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. That, yep. That I think is the thing. So we are. That was. That's the questions I have so far. So okay. I think what we're going to do is we're going to talk about convention season uh, a little bit, and then we'll oh, go yeah. into charity. So give me a second here, and we'll go through our, our conventions. Hopefully sure. somebody at one of these conventions gets you to come by, because I think it would be fun to, to have you as, of course, your acting um, history and all the things that you can talk about. Sure. Much, much I, less, I, yeah. I would love that, too. Yeah. And can I, I, can I just briefly say that um, I've got a wonderful Christmas movie coming out for uh -huh. anybody who wants to uh, to tune in. It's one of the Hallmark uh, Christmas movies. Okay. And it's called Magic Stocking. Uh-huh. And um, it's airing on... Uh, I've got a few dates here. I don't want to take up too much time. No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, um, the Magic Stocking airs in the States on the Hallmark Channel on December 16th, 19th, 23rd, and 26th. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if your viewers are... Um, so I just love the heart of the Bronies, and mm -hmm. I think you would love this because it's just a heart-filled, um, beautiful little movie. And and my husband and I, my husband plays my love interest in it. He was cast before I was, and there then I go. was cast after. Yeah. And the producers didn't know that we were actually a couple <laughs> in real life. So it, it was quite fun. Authenticity. Yeah. Authenticity. <laughs> we didn't have to do a didn't chemistry. Have, didn't have to fake read. that. Nope. <laughs> nope. And with that, convention season. So the first one coming up is, of course, Pacific Pony Con, first one of the year. And that is going to be January 8th to 10th in San Diego, San Diego, California. Um, guests so far, Rena Anakui, which is Sapphire Shores, of course. Um, Andrea Libman, No Whacking, Ellie Monti, uh, I Live Compossible a lot, AC Race Best, Saber Spark, uh, Mummified is going to be there also from your OC Sucks podcast. Um, held at this wonderful place, Kona Kai Hotel, which has its own, it's an island. It's on an island out in the bay, and they've got a private beach, and they've got free Wi-Fi, bike rentals, and all this stuff. It's going to be a really great time out there, so check that out. Uh, rooms are 139 a night. Use code 1119SDC for that rate. Uh, details at PacificPonyCon.com. Um, and, of course, next would be, of course, PonyCon NYC. Uh, February 13th to 15th, Brooklyn, New York. Um, guests, oh, their lineup is just getting huge. Lauren Faust. Bonnie Zacherly, the woman who gave us this whole wonderful world, My Pretty Pony. Uh, Andrew Francis, who's back after being gone a while. Uh, Vincent Tong, of course, Peter New. Shannon Chan Kent. GM Barrow. All the books. Um, and of course, uh, Kazumi Evans, singing voice. Tony Fleece from the comics, Andy Price from the comics, Denny Butt, Jada Jinx from the com from art in the fandom, and they just announced today, only hours ago, Kathy Westluck and Ingrid Nilsson will also be there. So if you're on the East Coast, don't miss this one. It's going to be huge. Tetsuo the Robots playing music, Your Enigma's playing music, Shakes Up, Shake Ups and Ponyville's playing, playing, playing music. Register, <clears throat> Dusty, back up, slow down. Thank you. Registration. Has many options uh, for your upgrades. Many things. In fact, they're going to have a banquet with Bonnie and Lauren doing a talk up there at the podium. You don't want to miss that. Check it out. Three-course meal goes with that. Ah, moving on. Babs. BabsCon's coming up really fast. BabsCon. So they have Lauren Faust, John Delancey, Nicole Oliver, Josh Haber, and Andy Price. Oh, yeah, and uh, somebody else who's just, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> prepare to fail. You're going to prepare to fail. <laughs> if you don't make a note, you'll fail. Trust me, you just saw it. Um, so, sponsor level badges are dwindling fast. Get there if you want to be sponsoring and get all the good goodies up there. Panel applications, concert applications, artists, everything is open. Go over to babscon.com to check that one out. Um, and, of course, Everfree Northwest, which is our favorite Northwest Seattle convention Chantel Strand first convention ever for Diamond Tiara is going to be there Shannon Chan Kent who plays Silver Spoon so bump up sugar lump they're all there Trevor Duvall is back since the con that shall not be named that man's been everywhere he's working for Marvel now Nick Studios down in LA wonderful gentleman uh, Jim Barrow is going to be there Michelle Krieber Black Griffin Peter New 
Reg is open with awesome new tiers. Vendor apps are open. Get over there if you want to be a vendor really quick. And that is all that's going on through the spring of pony conventions. You can be at anywhere on this big blue marble, there's a pony con. If you want to be there, be there. Lots of fun. I'm going to get to as many as I can. You know, you only get so much vacation time with what I'm doing, but I'm going to as many as I can. You better go if you want to see me. It's going to be awesome. So we get into charity work. Charity work. So Big Jimmy Miller with the children's art umbrella up there in Vancouver. We raised $510 with a big save coming in from uh, Spike Fireman. Thank you, Spike. Care to wins $100 on top of that. We'll give us $610 for that wonderful charity. Thank you, guys. Thank you, all you out there for helping out with our charity work. Our giveaways, of course, are this pile of stuff over here. And we've got, because it's coming up soon, one Darth Vader Pez. Right there, Darth Vader Pez, because what? Star Wars is in a week. Don't miss it. Not like you're gonna. And then, of course, we got Twilight, oops, Twilight Sparkle Secret Chip Pick Folder Cards. Uh, these are getting rare. Uh, my Manliest Mustache Competition Card. The Blazing Hot Wire Wildfire, which is my last one. And, of course, the Golden Gates Babscon card set from last year. I got a couple of these left. All of those, we got these wonderful comic books, which are the Hot Topic Tony Fleece covers, which all go together to make wonderful little pictures. These are cool. And because Big Jim is a huge comic book nut. And that one there, they go together like that. I have a bunch of these. I need to get, like, things to put them up on the wall. I'll go to Ikea next weekend. Plus this wonderful Power Ponies Maniac from Target right here because we were all comic books and cartoons last week. So that's also going to you. And because we broke $500, Big Jimmy Miller will take your interests, your winner you, and mold that into a comic that he thinks that you're going to like. And he will buy you that comic and he will ship it to you to get you into comic books because comic books are awesome okay so the winner comes out of this hat right here yes it's a stocking cap yes why because it's christmas in a week and a half something like that so we dig in here and we look for a name any name this name right here and this is going to be stat man dan stat man dan long time Supporter of the program, Statman. You are going to win all that stuff, plus a comic book from the man himself, Big Jim Miller. So, you know how to get a hold of me, buddy. So, just get a hold of me, and we'll ship all that stuff to you. And we'll get you to all your interests to Big Jim, so he can do that thing for you. So, with that, we move on to Iris's charity. Which is really cool, because it actually ties into her whole family. Mm -hmm. Which is neat. Can you tell us a bit about it there, Iris? Yeah, my uh, my uncle uh, mm -hmm. was um, an eye doctor here in Canada, and um, in the very first part of his uh, medical career, he decided that he wanted to go to India and do free cataract surgeries for the poor in India, and so he did that, and what was going to be a six week trip turned out to be his entire lifetime. He gave over to helping the poor in India and he started um, an organization called uh, Operation Eyesight with um, a businessman mm -hmm. who uh, who set it up as the charity and the charity has grown I think they have um, they have uh, Operation Eyesight in at least four or five countries now Wow! and uh, it's all um, doctors that give of their time uh, very simple operations like cataracts rather than being blind a 20 minute surgery is giving sight to millions of people so it's um i'm very very proud of my uncle for what he did and his uh philanthropy and his uh, charity work and when i did my cookbook i just decided that i would like to honor that and 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 have every sale of my cookbook donate two dollars back to um that charity and we've raised about two thousand dollars so far that's with awesome that. yeah yeah so we, i've sold about a a thousand copies and it's uh, just in the books to go into another printing so hopefully it's uh it will continue on with the charity and mm -hmm. uh, and and people will enjoy the recipes <laughs> absolutely i'm gonna enjoy the recipes that's for sure and you know what we're gonna do gang 
if you go over to manlysbrony.com and you click on the link and you give us a couple of bucks, you are going to be in for all of the new prizes which I got here. So, first thing we're going to start off with is, of course, more comic books. Why? Because comic books are awesome. And you should know that by now. So, we got a number four comic right here with the pony cover, IDW, and I got one of the latest Pony Friends Forever, which is number 18, which is the Rainbow Dash Fluttershy cover. And this is Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash going back to Clousdale Flight Camp. And, of course, everybody going back to, to a class reunion. We know how that goes. So, a pair of those. I got some more Twilight Sparkle Secret Chip Pick Folder Cards right there, mine and the Golden Gates. So there's those. I've got the Collectible Card Game. I got another Princess Celestia box for that card game. So if you don't have Princess Celestia, that yet there it is. And I got something, because there is no Abacus Cinch toy, of course, yet, that I can give you. I got this. Which is the three princesses from what I bought this a while ago. So this is gonna be this is a great idea to give us away. Of course we have Luna and we have Cadence and we have a pink Celestia. So this is early. So you can't get these anymore. This is this is from the Crystal Empire set. So you'll get that stuff. <sighs> but not only that. If we crack five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, I'm I'm pretty sure you're kind of figuring why I've got this cookbook here. That is actually signed by Miss Quinn. Yes, that is correct. If we break $500, you will get this very cookbook right here. <laughs> Absolutely. And she like she rushed this to me. It, it showed up at like 10 a.m. this morning just so we could have it for this show. So yeah. thank you very much for that. Uh, you're, you're entirely welcome. and I hope you enjoy it. Uh-huh. And we will have a link in the YouTube upload, which is going to be down there, if you want to buy this book so that you can have it for yourself if you don't win it, and $2 from every sale will go to this charity. Thank you very much, everybody. And, cer and, and certainly anybody that does buy my cookbook yes. uh, online, I will sign it specifically. Like yes. what, what, I'll put whatever in whatever the cookbook you want. You want. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? If, if, you know, if Scurry buys one, I want you to write in there, you have <laughs> detention, Iris. <laughs> I will. Detention. Screw is from Vancouver. He can come over yes. to my studio. He can go and over and pick, He can go over and like sa sample the delicacies. You know, while picking up. His you know book. what? Seriously, I I bake for Christmas. I've got a freezer full. So oh my god, I don't, I don't know whether Screw is on live now. I'm, I'm here. Absolutely. Right, it's listen, not, it Screw, like you, you come on over, and I will give you a sampling with almost. What every what time and and. <laughs> Like, absolutely, because that sounds like an amazing offer. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when we're off the air, yeah. you just you just give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> sounds we'll, good. We'll set up a time. Absolutely. Sounds good. So, And then <laughs> next next time we're on, Screwball will tell us all about the wonderful eats that are in this cookbook. Woohoo! Oh, yes. So it good, be. That's awesome. I'm good luck to the winner. Absolutely. Manlysbrony.com. Click on the link. Give us a couple of bits. You're in for all of this stuff. Thank yeah. you very much once again for supporting our show and all of our charity work. Thank you. We love you. And with that, hey, Screwball, how you doing, buddy? Sorry, I had to unmute again. <laughs> uh, I'm doing amazing. How are you guys doing? We're doing awesome, my friend. It's a couple, few days you're going to go back to home to see your folks. I know that. Yeah, for Christmas, I'm going to be yep. uh, going back to Alberta to uh, to see family and friends. My friends, being absolutely generous, bought me a plane ticket. Wow. To, that is cool. to fly me out. And yeah, I am very, very excited. That is now that's absolute. friendship. That's, that's friendship. Right that's there, absolute buddy. friendship. I cried when, <laughs> yeah. when when he told me over Skype. I'm like, you guys are too freaking amazing. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. And, and not only that, um, like just be, just before the show started, mm -hmm. I still, you guys heard my, my, my phone started going off. Yeah. And then so I get a package in the mail. Mm -hmm. I open it up uh -huh. and I get a Sombra t-shirt from uh, uh, Dat Tax Pony um, oh, and so with cool. the help of uh, uh, Marjan Lyon who helped uh, um, ship it out but nice. I was I'm like thank you guys because yep. I'm currently wearing it and it's amazing yes. yeah so that's, that's, for that we put on our Christmas hat <laughs> yep with my jingle bowl I hear a jingle. I, yep. I don't have a visual here but I, is there a is there a Santa cap yes on there's a Santa cap on my head Okay. Right now. Lovely. Why? Because it's Christmas, and I love Christmas. Yeah. And the tree is up over there with all kinds of pony on it. 
and we're going to have a Christmas episode we'll talk about at the end of the show. But right now, we need to talk about questions from our live studio audience. Oh, I got a bunch. I shall bring them in. Uh, so the, this one's first from Not Free Worthy. Uh, I'm guessing noteworthy. Um, uh, question is for you, Iris. Uh, how much research did you uh, do into the series before going in to record your lines for friendship games? Uh, truthfully, I didn't do any research whatsoever. Uh, I, I came very much a newbie to uh, the My Little Pony world. Um, I have many friends that are doing it. Uh, uh, Kathy Westluck a personal friend of mine. Michelle Krieber is a student of mine. Ashley Ball. Um, if, if, I don't know whether some of your uh, bronidum goes way back, but my niece uh, did Sky Wishes Ooh. back in, I think, the early uh, 2000s. Um, and she's a wonderful singer, actress here. So I certainly was aware of My Little Pony, but my career mostly uh, was centered in film and television. And mm -hmm. um, when I was brought in to do this... Um, it was a thrill, absolute thrill. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. So this one is from Dirty Ken. For you, Iris, uh, what were your first thoughts when you heard about the Brony fandom? Let me tell you, this is, this is the, my introduction to the Brony family. Um, my, my friend Michelle Krieber and mm -hmm. Ashley Ball were doing a Christmas show last year, like a, a musical, and it was uh, in North Van in a church. And Michelle's mom uh, uh, sent me a couple of comps for the show. So my husband and I went to the show in the church, and we arrived, and we, it was packed. The church was packed, and we sat at the back. And it was just one of those slow things when, when, when something is out of focus and then sort of comes into focus. We were <laughs> sitting at the back, and I realized, oh, my goodness, this, this group, three-quarters of the church, was filled with um, folks that, you know, were kind of uh, of the biker genre and not so much the church-going genre, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there was, like, there were some really great characters and there were, there were tatted uh, guys and gals. And, and, but I thought, this is, this is funny. You know, I just, I didn't, I didn't know anything about the show or anything. And then afterwards, when I was in the studio with Michelle and Ashley, mm -hmm. I said, well, a great concert. It was great. And I said, and the crowd, they just loved you. What an audience you, you drew. And they said, those were the bronies. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, with great love, they said that because they were so, uh, they're just so appreciative of the brony family and, and the support that you give them. And and I, I was just I was just thrilled that night to be at the back of the church and sort of being on the periphery. And now I feel like I'm in the middle of the of you guys. I'm oh in, yeah. I'm in the middle of the crowd. I'm not an outsider. I'm not on the periphery yes. anymore. <laughs> yes. Thank you for inviting me in. You're welcome. No more You're fluttershying welcome. on the wall over there. Come on in. <laughs> no more fluttershy. Yes. Next. Oh, this one is from Soggy Milk. <gasps> I love that name. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's such a <laughs> hilarious name. <laughs> uh, so question for you. Are you ours? If you were a superhero or supervillain, what would your name and powers be? Ooh, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. What my powers would be? I would, I would like to have laser eyesight. And that would be my power. And... Um, I would like to see a vision of the world, of course, you know, don't get me started, I'll start crying. Mm -hmm. The world today needs some superpower, whatever it is, whatever entity can come and get us untangled mm -hmm. with the mess that we're in right now, because seriously, uh, that's, that's the superpower I would have, like super laser power to untangle the big mess that we're in. I like that. I like that one too. That's a really good power. Yep. It's really good. Ooh, ooh, ooh I like this one. Uh, this one is from Pink Pearl Apple. For you, for everyone, uh, how are you spending Christmas and Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve is actually our Christmas dinner day because it, um, we have a very large family. Well, I'll, I'll say my husband has a large family. <laughs> I'm from the East Coast, so I'm here just with my son, but my husband's family numbers 34, and they're, 
They're all coming to our 900 square foot apartment for what? a sit down dinner, which I am making. What? So, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, fortunately, I've done a lot of catering, so I'm used to, like, yes. cooking for big crowds, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Fred's family are wonderful cooks, and they all bring a dish. So, you know, it's pretty easy, but it's it's jam-packed, and they're all musicians. Um, oh, wow, the after dinner must be really fun. <laughs> well, it's really fun, and, and uh, Screw, you would know this, probably. Um, my husband's brother is the leader of the band Chilliwack. No uh, way! What? Yeah. Yahweh! Wow! <laughs> cool! So uh, both both Fred's brothers, my husband's brothers, are uh, coming that night with their families, and the guitars come out. No! And, uh, yes, and Saffron Henderson, who I mentioned as, as Sky Wishes, is, has a band of her own, and her sister sings for uh, and with uh, Sarah McLaughlin. So when the guitars come out, suddenly Christmas music becomes Mormon Tabernacle Ooh, Choir. Oh, my God. And we all sing full voce, and it's just unbelievable. That sounds like the perfect Christmas. That's crazy. It's pretty darn awesome. You should, you should <laughs> like, you should like put up a camera in the corner of the, the and just live stream the whole thing. <laughs> you know, just record it and put it up on YouTube because it just uh, nailed it. Wow. wow. Well, maybe maybe we will do that sometime. Um, Bill, uh, Fred's brother in Chilliwack, organized us all to go to Salt Spring Island one time, and we we put on a, a Henderson family uh, Christmas concert. Wow. Which, which went over really well, and we played to a few hundred people, and it was great. So I've always heard them on. Uh, I don't know if you know the radio program um, CKUA. It's sort of an uh, Alberta uh, radio show, but I've heard a lot of them on there. And that's how I know of them is because my dad listens to that sort of stuff. I know of Chilliwack, so. for crying out loud. Do you? Yeah, there I, you go. I grew up in Detroit. Yeah. So it well, was all over the radio. Absolutely. Gone, 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 been gone so long, been yeah. gone, 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 gone so long. long. Uh, <laughs> yes. Are you kidding me? That. that was the Chilliwack big, that was big the chill, song. That was the big hit. That was like yeah. MTV and everything. Yeah, well, gone, gone, gone. dot com. The, the, you can go and listen to their music. I tell you, it's it, it, it. When you listen to it, you go, "Oh my gosh, I remember that one." Yeah, I know that song. I know that song. Yeah, yeah. So you cool. got. You know what? You have to make my my sweet potatoes for them. Please, sure. please. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I will. Thank you. Next. Uh, oh, one sec. Uh. Ooh, so this is from Soggy Mail. Question for ours: uh, What is your favorite uh, Saturday Night Live skit? Ooh, good one. Oh, this is this one. I don't even have to think about. It's <laughs> the, it's the cowbell skit. Oh yeah. Honestly, is, does it get better does than it get that? Any better? I mean, come on. It's like I really want you to explore the space. <laughs> Christopher Christopher Walken, like, does he not like oh. rock the world? Oh yeah. Like, in in that sketch, I th I could watch it a million times. Yeah. The crazy thing is, I've watched, I've seen Blue Oyster Cult live. Ah. After that came out. Yeah. And they had one of their roadies in the back behind the 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 speakers actually playing the cowbell. And they tried to get him to come out, and he wouldn't do it. That <laughs> <laughs> was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, oh, for me, it was anything with the Blues Brothers. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. That goes way back. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, people still even today love watching the Blues Brothers. That's a definite. Actually, I have one. I have one question for you guys. What is your favorite Christmas movie? I know what yours oh, is. It, it, yeah, cool. Die Hard, die of hard. course. <laughs> Die Hard? Yeah. It's a Christmas it's, movie. I label, I label it as a Christmas movie. <laughs> um, I, I think, it, for me, it's almost anything Rankin Bass did Christmas. You know, the, the stuff they did in the 60s was better than the stuff they did in the 70s. But, you know, uh, the year without Christmas with the heat miser and the snow miser, that was pretty cool. Um, oh, and, I don't know that one. I'm going to make notes. I'll write oh, yeah. that down. Yeah. Uh, the, the year without a Santa Claus is the name of it. Are you, okay. Uh, and that was a huge hit in my house when I was a kid. And then, of course, the original Rankin Bass, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, um, and almost any Peanuts 
Yeah. Uh, you know, any definitely... peanuts. You know, peanuts Christmas, peanuts well, Thanksgiving. Yeah, since you, peanuts, you, know. since you hear that Charlie Brown yeah. Christmas music, don't you think of that Christmas tree? Yeah. I just want to dance on a piano. Yeah, you want to dance on a piano. <laughs> we actually we actually mocked that last year. A bunch of the uh, a bunch of the analysts and I got together and we actually rewrote um, a Charlie Brown Christmas in and around the uh, the Brony fandom, where I played I played Charlie Brown and Doctor Wolf played Linus. Oh, you'd be a perfect Charlie Brown. Yeah. So we did, yeah, we did that, and it was actually it was a huge hit. So it was it was a lot of fun. I want to be Lucy to your Charlie Brown, Dusty. There we go. All right, <laughs> the future date. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I actually did kick. I was the high school kicker on my football team. <laughs> actually, you know what's one really good Christmas one? What? Uh, National Lampoon's. Yeah, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those were funny. Charlie, but, uh, not Charlie. Uh, Chase. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That Very was good. good. I, I loved, uh, there was a, a movie um, that came out called A Christmas Story mm -hmm. with a Red Rider BB gun. Yes. Do you know that one? Oh, yeah. Yes. Everyone knows that one. Don't shoot out your eye. You're going to shoot out, shoot out, out your eye. eye, kid. Kicks him down a slide. <laughs> I, I think that's my all-time favorite. Yeah. When when the dad wins that, that uh, yeah. nylon stocking yeah. lamp. Fragile, it must be French. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> so good. Uh, next. Oh, my gosh. Oh, let's see here. Uh, ooh, so the, uh, this one's from uh, Co uh, Conan Royal. Uh, Hi, Conan Royal. I'll answer your question now. Uh, this is from quite, uh, for you, Iris and Dusty. Uh, favorite cartoon character in history? Oh, jeez. Mm. <laughs> That's well, hard. You go, you go first, Dusty. I got to think about that That's for a second. Hard. I have so many. Wow, faves. it depends on the era, really, because if you go back, <clears throat> if you go back a really long ways, you, you get into Heckle and Jekyll, you get into Mickey Mouse, you get into Donald Looney Duck, Tunes. you get into uh, Chip and Dale. Um, the early stuff where Chippendale versus Donald Duck, way oh, before yeah. Rescue Rangers or any of that stuff ever happened. Donald Duck, you're talking my language. Yeah. What's um, up, Doc? Wow. Yeah, Donald Duck, um, all that stuff. And then you get into, like, the late 60s, early 70s. You get into things like Devlin. You get into things like uh, Thunder of the Barbarian, which was a huge, wonderful show. Oh, my God. If you, if you guys don't know Thunder of the Barbarian, it was a mm -hmm. wonderful science fiction-y sh show where it's the end of the world and everybody comes back and magic is real and you have barbarians and, and oh my god, you gotta see that show. I mean, they, they canceled it way too early because it was way too before its time. Way too before its time. Wow. Um, and then uh, Top Cat and Huckleberry Hound and El Cabong and you just go on and on and on and on and on. You know, a lot of the Hanna-Barbera stuff from that era was awesome. Um, and don't forget Sylvester. Don't forget uh, Sylvester, Tweety. It, Tweety, wow. Pepe Le Pew. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, yeah, for you sure. You know, uh, the big red monster that, that uh, uh, Hazel the Witch, you know. Um, meet me, Roadrunner. Meet me, Roadrunner, Coyote. You know, you might as well just call Chuck Jones a god and be done with it. You know? Yeah. Um, so. Didn't, didn't that, do you remember uh, when Mel Blanc died? Do you remember oh, the poster man. that came out with yeah. the spotlight of yep. him on an empty yep. stage? Yep. Does that not make you cry? Absolutely. Like every time I Absolutely. see it, like sometimes I use it actually as acting prep if I mm -hmm. need to bring tears yeah. to, to to a scene. Mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just kind of call Think that one it. up, and mm -hmm. it just it just slays me. It just it, it says it all. Yeah. But, um, in, in in his autobiography, it says that when he was in an auto, I think it was auto accident, and he was in a coma, mm -hmm. he, they couldn't bring him out, and then some the doctor started asking for Bugs, and he started talking as Bugs Bunny. Oh my gosh! In his coma, it brought him back. Oh my gosh! Um, I can't remember. The, I'm very bad with names, really. Um, the creator of the Muppets, Jim Henson. Um, Jim Henson. Yeah, when he passed away, uh, there was this uh, Disney actually uh, did a uh, 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 drew a picture of uh, Mickey condoling Kermit mm -hmm. the Frog. Yeah. Oh, that, that oh. one always hits me. Oh my! I just got goosebumps all over. Yep. Seriously, that that's so moving. Like that Disney actually drew that. It just yeah. yeah. Jim, Jim Henson was another guy. Who was way before his time. Oh, brilliant. Way before his time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dark Crystal for crying out loud! I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, Dark Crystal as a movie was freaking enormous. It was great. Wow. There's a, there a tent pole right there in the middle of that. I can go on and on, people. 
about <laughs> I can go on and on about the Muppets, about about animation, about all this stuff. But we're gonna go forward because because okay, definitely. <laughs> we're not here to talk about. I'm just my, I'm just you know, so we're here to talk about ours, now, so. <laughs> Uh, ooh, so this one's from, uh, Dirty Can Question for Iris. Do you have any, uh, meatless recipes for vegan types? Hmm. Um, I don't eat red meat at all myself. Hmm. So there, there is a, a, one chapter in my cookbook that, um, has a few meat recipes from a catering friend of mine who lives in Portland. Yes. Uh, because I wanted a well-rounded okay. cookbook. Jones but, chapter. um, my cookbook, uh, has, my section, uh, my, most of it is, is just, there are our chicken and fish. Yes. For protein uh -huh. uh, recipes in my cookbook, but um, as far as true vegan, uh, my cookbook I would not say would would be the one for your shelf. No, um, but because it, uh, it has but eggs it, in it and all kinds of stuff. Yes, yeah, it does. I, like it, I know that vegan is very yes, very weird. Strict, a restricted strict diet, and mm -hmm. and um, my cookbook is is sort of more general. I'm, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely. Pancakes, uh, pancakes sublime. Ooh. Ah. I'm all over that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, they're they're good, easy, healthy yeah. recipes um, with ingredients that you don't have to get a dictionary out to pronounce, and you can go to your grocery store and buy them. Yes. You know, it's pretty easy stuff, and uh, I think it could change you know people's way of of eating. It's the way I've eaten my whole life, and I never even have to think about dieting just because it's healthy. Nice. You know? That's what I need. I need some healthy. Yeah. I, had, some, I, I read somewhere, somebody, a dietician said, you can eat almost anything you want as long as you make it at home and you eat it at home. Nice. So it, it, it's just eliminating all the processed foods, right? Yeah. I had I, I had gotten myself down to like 200 and just, just under 230 pounds and then I had a hernia surgery. And then, nope. <laughs> ah. Hernia surgery just basically put most of it back on. Really? Yep. Because because you were inactive. I was inactive for over oh. a month and a half because I had to sit in that lazy boy over there because I couldn't move. Oh. And yeah, it was bad. So now I let it go like an idiot. My fault. Um, so beginning January one, after all this is over, right back at it. Of course. So by the time Babscon rolls around, we're getting it all back off. You and three quarters of the world, we yep. you know are going to go Fight on the, all the time. January first, right? Fight <laughs> Resolution. I've I've fought my weight all the time. I mean, when I was playing college football, I couldn't put on any weight. I was 198 pounds soaking wet playing defensive end. That just ain't good enough. Right. So the minute I left, the minute I left school, I was 250 immediately. Yeah. It was like yeah because I was always running it off. Yeah. Well, we all don't have to be skinny minis anyway. Nope. No, my body <laughs> my body always resets at a certain size. Yeah. No matter what I my, do. My body likes to be my if I'm working out and all. My body likes to be between 235 and 240. That's where it loves to be. Yeah. So as long as I can get back to there, I'm happy. I don't need yeah, to be exactly. 220 pounds. Yeah. No, no you don't. Nope. 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 Uh, this one's from Flare Cobra for everyone. What is your favorite holiday snack? <laughs> mm. You're killing me, dude. We were just talking <laughs> about losing weight, and now you want to talk about snacks. <laughs> That's oh, the irony of it. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> what about you, Iris? Okay, my favorite holiday snack. Well, I'm a chip freak. Me too. You know, I can't, I can resist sweets. I, I'm more of a savory kind of gal, mm -hmm. yeah. although I do like sweets. But I, but if there's a bowl of chips in front of me, especially if there is like a, fr like a French onion dip beside yeah. it. Oh, God. Like I, I, will, I will stow away, I'll take the bowl and yeah. kind of hide alone in a corner for a while yeah. and eat most of them. Yeah. You can't put a, you can't put a sleeve of Pringles anywhere near me. <laughs> oh. There will not be a sleeve of Pringles late, you know, in 10 minutes. But... <laughs> When, when I was growing up, we had this local dairy in Port Huron, Michigan called London's Dairy, and they had the French dip to die for. And the better made potato chips that they made locally in the area, put those yeah. two together with a, a bottle, two liter bottle of soda pop, and that was a Sunday football day. Nice. All day long. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what we did. Yeah. So what's your favorite snack? Oh, I, I would have to say if it's, the Christmas holiday season, I would have to say any holiday cookie whatsoever. You know, yeah. especially, especially sugar cookies with the chocolate drop in the center. Okay. Okay. Because my mom used to make those all the time, and oh my God, are they good, right? It's funny how we hearken back to our childhood oh, with yeah. our favorites. Yeah. You know, I'm going, I'm going back home to see my folks the, 
the second week of January. I'm going to be gone for a week. I'm taking my video camera with me, and me and my mom are doing a cooking show. Excellent. That's what we're doing, Mom. Well, listen, if you you come up to Vancouver, you and I will do one of your cooking segments in my catering kitchen in my house. Uh, Deal. 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 Okay. (laughs) I was looking into plane prices just the other day, so yes. We will make that happen. Excellent. Absolutely. Next. Oh, this is from Nora Mermaid. Uh, question for ours. How long have you been sinning, and did you enjoy seeing Unleash the Magic in the movie? I had so much fun singing Unleash the Magic, you have no idea. <laughs> kid, kid in the candy store to have an orchestra, uh, 20 backup singers. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this was all on a bed track, mind you. It wasn't live. But to have that in, in my headphone, in the cans, in my head, uh, and just kind of being able to rock out on it, mm-hmm. it was just a dream come true. And as far w- when I started singing, um, I think I've been singing all my life. Uh, I think it's in the genetic makeup of Nova Scotians. We have kitchen parties, and the guitars come out, and the the, the, the step dancers start step dancing, and <laughs> everybody starts. They, singing. Put, they put the cross swords down, and they do the. the you bet. You nice bet at parties. Nice. Yes. And uh, so I I've been singing all my life, and uh, I I I came at a crossroads in my life. Do I want to go into music, or do I want to go into acting? And I felt I was my talents were stronger as an actor than as a singer although singing is what i have the most fun doing i have to say i love singing karaoke for me I, yeah I, I, that's fun i actually yes. got i actually got uh ringered in the ninth grade choir um and we had like 60 kids in the in the choir class five boys and i was a bass oh. <laughs> and i stuck out like a sore thumb <laughs> so you would. my teacher had to actually write me parts but yeah, so yeah, I've started. I started singing in ninth grade, and and then I was a karaoke host for a while. I love to sing. I mean, my whole channel's full of singing, so I might not be great at it, but I have fun doing it. Well, you know what? It lifts the spirit, and yeah. that, that's the bottom line. And and choirs are a wonderful way to express your love of music because you're with a group of people. You're not sort of solo singing and you, 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 you have to be sort of in tune with everybody else around you and, and the, the camaraderie of singing in a choir. So I would advise anybody, look, look in oh, your yeah. local newspapers and join a choir because there's no greater joy. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to be a big pop star to no. join a choir. Like playing music. Playing music with people is, is just another joy. When I yeah. started taking bass lessons and, and the once a, once a month going and playing in this, the student little band thing, that was so much fun. Yeah. I look forward to that every month. Yeah, I was my, a saxophone player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, my, and my husband retired, uh, from not from acting, but he had a, a, a sort of his day job was, uh, was a realtor here in Vancouver. He retired about six years ago mm-hmm. and he was kind of at loose ends and uh, his, I mentioned before, his two brothers in Chilliwac. Mm-hmm. So genetically, he was predispos- predisposed to becoming a good guitar player. So he started to learn the guitar, and he did. He's nice. become great. That's cool. Yeah. Absolutely. It's never too late. It's never too late. No. Exactly. That, there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Next. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh. Um. Oh, yes. Um, so this one's from Spike Farman. I know what this one's going to be. Yeah, you know exactly Absolutely. what it's going to be. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, Aris, um, there's, a, a Spike makes these amazing wood carvings, and he was wondering if you would like a wood carving of your character. Wow. Holy, what an offer. Yep. <laughs> Holy. I would be honored Honored, my goodness! This that sounds was... yes, they're they're good. We yeah. uh, we both have one. Yep, we both have one. He, he does, does one them to like every single one of our guests. Yep. We every have, one of our so... guests usually gets one. Oh yep. my gosh! Well, really, I'm just I'm blown away. I would I would be honored. Then I'll send you one of my cookbooks. Well, there let's do go. an exchange, an exchange of uh, crafts. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be good. Cool. We'll get you in touch with each other after the show. Sure. Well, thank you so much for that. What an honor and what a thrill. Very generous. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see here. Oh, one sec. Now I got Chilliwack in my head. <laughs> it's hard to get them out. I know. <laughs> so good. Ah, oh, so this one's from uh, Agent Rules. Too dusty. Yeah. What was it like to Skype chat with the Ty- uh, Taiwan bronies? 
it was kind of weird actually. <laughs> um, it, they had to get they got me on the call and then they had to go get a camera. And when they got the camera, all of a sudden they were they had the kids with the microphones and it was echoing in the room and I couldn't hear anything, much less they were speaking broken English. So I had to like guys, 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 go back over here away from the thing so I could hear what you're saying. But yeah, I, I, it was really fun actually, you know, to see all those guys over there. Uh, the, J- the Japan Bronies were there. It was nice to see them. Um, after the little interview, he walked around with his, his laptop, and I introduced me to everybody who was there, pretty much, um, which was kind of cool. So I got to see a lot of the art and a lot of the, the plushie makers and a lot of the other stuff. So it was, it was really kind of fun. Sorry, I was just typing there. I don't want you guys hearing my crazy mechanical keyboard. <laughs> yes. Uh, also from a... Uh, uh, Oh, where did I put it? Oh, also from Agent Rules, uh, GRS. He, he, uh, he just says, a shout out from Wayne in Taiwan. Uh, loved your work in Friendship Games. Oh, well, thank you so much. And especially from so far away. What, yeah. what, 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 it's so crazy. Yeah. The, the worldwideness of it is just, yep. they, just awesome. ha- they just had their own convention that I was Gosh. a Skype guest to. Um, uh, Japan had theirs a few weeks ago. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Peru. Peru bronies have their own. Um, geez, and Australia has one. Um, let's see, there's many, many, many all over America. Uh, and, of course, there you've got Brony Can up there in Toronto, or up there where you were at, I'm sorry, Vancouver. Um, mm-hmm. It's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Wow. Cool. Next. Ah, also, uh, from Dari Can, he, uh, he just, um, uh, just wants us to give a shout out to the Marones family, or Matt. I always Marones family. Um, You might know him as um, uh, well uh, as uh, the one child who. uh, Yeah, Michael. uh, Yeah, Michael. And uh, uh, just shout out to them uh, for the Christmas. They've been going through, you know, a hard time with the uh, husband leaving them and that sort of thing. Mm. And uh, just wish them the best of luck for this Christmas season. Absolutely, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just want to give a shout out to them. Good luck to them. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, ooh, so this is also from Dirty Cans for you, Dusty. Did you do any sketches in the acting class? No, we didn't get to sketch work. It, that was, it was an introduction to acting, an introduction to the Meisner technique. So it was four, four weeks, one evening a week. Oh, that's um, fun. Meisner is, is yeah. really an interesting technique. Yeah, they keep trying to get me back. But it's like, but it was sort of like it was on special for that month, so I could afford it that month. Right. But, you know what they want you to pay to actually keep going is stupid amounts of money, which I don't stupid. have. Yeah. yeah, I know it, it is. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy amounts of money. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, to tell you the truth, it was an okay school. It didn't really turn my crank that, mm-hmm. that well. If I if I had really gotten a connection with the teachers, then I might have probably continued. But mm-hmm. uh, I think that. The people that I've met in this industry, that I think I could get just about as much out of it than from just ask, asking questions of my friends, than going in there and and spending the money with those guys. I don't know. So for sure. And you know what? What when I first moved to Vancouver um, from Nova Scotia about 24 years ago, I didn't know anyone here, and um, uh, we uh, a few people that I met on the audition trail. Uh, we be, became friends, and what we did is that we started a peer group mm-hmm. of of about eight or ten actors that would get together every week, and we would bring sides in from what we were auditioning with, mm-hmm. and we would work with each other. It was a peer peer to peer group, and yeah. we would we would l- review what we did on camera and talk about it, and it was it was wonderful, and it was free. Yeah. So you know, you, and I learned a lot. And yeah. what's, re- what's really cool is um, a gentleman who used to buy parts for me at the, the store that I work at as a mechanic is an actor. He was an actor in New York and he started doing acting, you know, plays here in the Bay area. And I went to see him, um, in uh, streetcar named desire. Wonderful, oh, wow. wonderful production. Wow. And, um, then he started inviting me to things like karaoke nights with all the actors and things. And he, he just invited me to a Christmas party with his actor friends oh. and, because he's moving away to Tennessee. And now I've got all these actor friends of his that are, are now friend, you know, I'm connected to on Facebook and everything and, and all that. So now if they need, they have a part in one of their plays, they're going to call me. So it's Fantastic. Like, there you go. Yeah. So, networking. It's networking. great. So. Yeah. And, and, and try the, the peer, peer group yep. uh, study. It's great. Next. Oh. 
16, there we go. Uh, let's see, yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so uh, this is Ricard, uh, Ricard uh, OFR 200. Uh, Christmas questions, there's okay. so many of them. Okay. For all, favorite Christmas decor? Ah. <laughs> you go ahead, Dusty. Um, I, I like a really intricate wreath. Somebody who put a lot of work and thought into what a wreath looks like. Nice. I like, I like wreaths. A lot. I've got a... I've, <laughs> I've got a Gumby Santa Claus. Nice. Yes. And I Gumby him into the weirdest positions uh -huh. every day. Whether... <laughs> coming down like the attic stairwell <laughs> the next morning uh, and it's it's always like a surprise for my husband and he he does the same thing with this gumby santa claus <laughs> so it, sometimes it's like on hanging off a lampshade like he had had a you know a few before uh -huh. <laughs> before <laughs> and uh, anyway anyway i love my gumby santa that's awesome we actually have a princess celestia on top of our tree oh do you yeah. <laughs> of course you would of course we would I don't think I don't think there's anything on our tree that isn't pony related. Really? At this point, yeah. After three years of buying pony ornaments, we now have an entire tree with nothing but globes, chain, and pony ornaments. Wow! You should you should take a picture of it and put it up on your site because I'd love to see it. Okay, I will. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, one thing one thing I have to say is my friend actually has this entire like train set of like a you know those miniature Christmas yes. cities. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, those are my absolute those favorite. Those are cool. Those are so cool. My, my mom hated when she put it up, though, because I'll start playing when I was a kid, play Legos on them. <laughs> oh. Then, then she'd see it to be an absolute mess, and then she's like, you're, you're ruining it. <laughs> nice. But, hey, uh, hey, 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 guys. Yeah? I think Joe Stevens is trying to break in. Oh, yes. I think the magic mirror is open. Joe Stevens is breaking in. We're going to EQI right now. So, breaking news from the desk in Ponyville with Joe Stevens coming up right now. Now. Thank you, Dusty Cat. This just in. The Equestrian Geospatial Science and Bean Dip Research Team has finally developed a theory regarding the simultaneous existence of pony populated Equestria and a world populated by humans known as Earth. As you all know, Twilight Sparkle has visited this world that exists parallel to Equestria, and rather than have Rainbow Dash nuke it on site, as was originally proposed, she has earned a friendly relationship with this world. But scientists have begun to ask questions. Why is there only a parallel universe with humans? Why not dolphins? Why not burning ducks? What is the elusive eighth layer to a seven layer dip? Countless magic mirrors exist in Equestria. From the mirror pond, to the Crystal Empire's mirror, to the mirror Rarity talks into when she thinks no pony else is looking. So it is statistically improbable, given the volume of magic mirrors, that only one alternative world exists. Since it was Pinkie Pie who first stated this problem, it has been titled The Pinky Paradox. Not to be confused with the 11 other Pinky Paradoxes, none of which makes sense. So what is the solution to the Pinky Paradox? Where is the parallel universe where I can shake tentacles with Octopus Joe Stevens? Pinky Pie states that since each universe creates a rainbow dash, that it is as statistically probable the universe exists that the rainbow dash of said universe has destroyed it. The fact that two universes exist at all is a miracle. And given the lack of other universes, scientists have concluded that it is inevitable our world and the next will be struck into oblivion by a glorious sonic rain boom. That or this is just what happens when scientists listen to Pinkie Pie for too long. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been a news brief from the Equestrian Inquirer. Back to you, Dusty Cat. <laughs> Can you believe it? Multiple, they're starting to figure out the multiple universes, like the one that the Equestria is in, and then of course Equestria, and then all those things Pinky does. I mean, come on, it's, it's amazing that they're figuring this stuff out. But, you know, Rainbow Dash, stop destroying these different universes. <laughs> disease. God, stop with the rain booming. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you like Rainbow Dash? Do I like Rainbow Dash? Yeah. Oh, boy. Do I like Rainbow Dash? Oh, boy. Is that a loaded question? <laughs> um, 
Let's see. How many tattoos of Rainbow Dash do I have on my body? Hmm. Oh, wow. At least two. You know, I think she's my favorite, too. And I have to say, like, I haven't watched nearly as many episodes as you have. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I like Rainbow Dash a lot. I think she's really... I, like... I like her character arc because when she first started, nobody liked her because she was too brash and too out there. And now that yeah. she, now she's pretty tempered. Over the five seasons, you've seen her arc go, I'm, uh -huh. I'm too full of myself. And then I've learned my lesson. And now I'm starting to learn my lessons and use them. Wow, so, interesting. Yeah. You, yeah. you can actually you see, see a lot of character development. Tons of character development for that character. So, yeah, I'm, I, uh -oh. I love her. And I'm not done with the tattoos yet. So there you go. Really? Yep. And I, Andy I got, just got, got his Sonic first Rain tattoo, boom. too. I've got the Sonic Rain Boom on my right chest with a rainbow going into my right shoulder, which has Rainbow Dash's head there with clouds. <laughs> wow. My left shoulder <laughs> is going to have Castle Cantalot on it with Flying Pegasi and other things. Yeah, I'm planning, well, planning that one right now. I wish my character was cuter. You don't want Principal Cinch on your body. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't want Principal Cinch on me anywhere. No, me. not at all. No. Not at all. No. I was uh, I was, uh, I was the tattoo, a tattoo parlor with uh, Sib uh, Sibzy and Mando yes, Pony. when Mando got his thing. Yes, oh. and and then so Sibzy was like constantly, like constantly yeah. joking, like you need to get a tattoo of Sombra or Dead yeah. Space or something. It's like maybe if I give you a gift certificate, then you you're go. then you have to get a tattoo. I'm like, Sabrina, what, what I want to know, what I want to know, Screwy, what I'm, you yes? were there. I want to know if I want to know if Mando Pony cried. No, he took it did very he? well. Did he? He was he was like the was he the, the tattoo... manly man. Oh, he was a manly man. Putting that on. He was he was a manly man. Nice. He was like. He was, uh, he, like, he was, he was more, like, yeah. concentrated on it. Like, he was just, like, in the zone or something. He's like, this feels really good. And then, and then everyone, everyone in the whole studio are like, oh, boy, he's going to turn into an addict. <laughs> yep. The endorphin rush of getting a tattoo is crazy. You That's know, what I've been hearing. I guess it's a slippery slope. It is. It is a slippery slope. I, mm -hmm. I can sit in a chair for about four and a half hours wow. getting things done. And at, at that point, the body goes, ah, oh, you're done. <laughs> it's starting to hurt now. Okay, then we're done. So, do, you, do you zone out? I, I don't have a, any tattoos. A, a bit. You, you'll sit in the chair and you, you sort of like close your eyes and you zone out and you hear the, the gun going and you feel the pricking and, and you basically you're just, you just zone out of it, you know, a little bit. And yeah. then it'll take you to, your, your eyes closed, it'll take you to a place, you know, you start thinking about this or that or the other thing. And it's just like meditation, mm -hmm. right? And just let the artist do his work. Right. Kind of thing. You've, right. Al you've already made your choice. It's already on your body and in, 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 in start. As soon as he starts to black work, it's done. So you might as well just sit back and relax. And always choose your artist carefully. Yes, and choose your uh, artist carefully. The, this guy that they got was so cool. Loved yes. him. Really cool guy. If I was to get a tat, I would definitely go to my, him. My, my artist actually moved away, so I have to find a new artist. That's how I to Sabrina, and that's how she found this guy. Yep. So, in fact, I found a guy I'd love to have do my, my left shoulder, but he's $750 a day. And he's in Maine. So wow. it's like cross the country plus go north. Then yeah, but his his art is absolutely breathtaking. Oh my god, wow. breathtaking. I I think about a second job just so I can get the money to do it. It's, it's, it's <laughs> you know, in in the middle of good. winter, it's yeah. terrible on the east coast. Oh yeah, you are in the sunny climes. Why don't you invite him there? I could. Yeah. I could. Get get some of your friends together and kind yeah. of like and just have, have a have a tattoo party. party. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way you think. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Always yes. plotting. Well, we don't have much time left there, Screwy, so let's let's throw some fire hosing down here. Okay, uh, some fire hosing. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, so this is from Agent Rules to you, Iris. Uh, when can we expect your husband to do voice My Little Pony? <laughs> <laughs> do you want him to become part of the Brony family? Who knows? I say hell yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Wait, he's he's in the background here. I'm gonna bring him over. He's gonna he'll just uh, say hi to everybody. So his name is Fred Henderson, and he just... Hey, you guys. Hi, Fred. Whoa, just loved what's been going on here. This is a <laughs> wonderful show. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Thanks. So you, so you Terrific host. You might have a new convert. There you go. <laughs> we got 114 shows on the YouTube to check out. Woo! Whoa. There you okay. go. Okay, well, maybe the Harley Davidson. Let's start there. Do that one. That's what I do. <laughs> if you got a bike, I can, I can actually work on it, or I can, you know, figure out what parts you need. Well, I do have a bike, but it has no engine but me. What? Yes. Oh, that bicycle thing. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I got one of those, too. 
<laughs> Fred, nice. Fred does voice work as well, so maybe he'll do a My Little Pony one of these days. That'd yeah, be cool. fun. Yeah. Yeah, would. You, you, he and I both have the deep voice thing going on. Yeah, you do. Maybe we can both come up there and do like generals and Samba's army or something like that. Yeah, for sure. You guys got the major molasses pipes, I call them. Bronies. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a peanut butter and nana sandwich. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my friend. Hey, pleasure. Oh. Sweet. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, Thanks. my God. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh... Um, well, oh, yeah, I'm just reading this all wrong. What the heck? Um, uh, oh, uh, so this one's from Jimmy Voiceover, one of my really good friends. Uh, for you, Aris, what is your favorite recipe that you have found to date? Mm, good question. That is a good question. Wow. Oh, I just, I just love food. You know, just, um, you know, uh, gosh, favorite recipe. I've got I've got one in in my cookbook called That Cake. If we're talking sweets, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's made with uh, medjool dates, and um, it's just so moist. And and check this out: you kind of heat up cream and butter and a little brown sugar, mm -hmm. and you drizzle that on top of the date in the cake. Mm -hmm. And seriously, you want to rent a room and be by yourself with that cake. With that cake. Oh my god. You have to be at one with with uh, one one with the cake with what at one with the yes. cake. Yes. Now so, and now in this book is the chili mm -hmm. recipe yours or Jones? The uh, roasted chili. Yeah. Roasting pan chili. No, the chi that is in the soup chili. Oh, the soup chili is hers. Okay. Um, yeah, she there's a there's a front cover. She, I think she she uh, put in about fifteen recipes yeah. out of the two hundred. Yeah. And so she did put in a chili. I've got one in there called a roasting pan chili, uh -huh. which um, which will really save your life. And if you if a lot of your um, uh, uh, the, your uh, brony uh, fandom is uh -huh. um, our students, yeah. if you do the uh, roasting pan chili, you eat that for an entire week, and you wow. make burritos out of burritos. it, you can make soup out of it, nice. you can make, and all you do is open cans and mm -hmm. put them in a roasting pan and just roast it for four hours. Nice. Yeah. And See, so it's my, yeah. easy. My family has a, a, a deer camp chili recipe. That's exactly mm -hmm. that. Basically, right. it's, it's throw everything in the pan. It's all measured by cans. <laughs> yes. You yeah. show up, put the pot on the stove, put it all in, and you wait. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and it's darn good. It's darn good, Absolutely. and it's healthy. So many, so much wonderful protein in beans. People oh, forget. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, I'll I'll give you a pass on the beans. Okay. Yeah. I'm from I'm from the Midwest, and we don't bean our chili. You don't bean what? 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 I like I I'm sorry, but I bean my chili. I, know. I, I bean I my have chili to. too. No, because, <laughs> because you can't put you can't put it on a chili dog with beans. You yes, can. you can. Well, yes, you, you can, can, but the beans fall out when you're eating a hot dog. No, well, no, Well, you're no, eating no. it wrong then. Yeah. You are. And also, if, if you make a bean chili and it's too moist, yeah. you take a potato masher and mash it up. Uh, and it yeah, yeah, more that'll work. -like. Yes. There you yeah. go. Or, or you use on your burrito. oyster crackers. Yeah. Oyster crackers makes it awesome. I had my first, I had oh, my first oysters yeah. in Disneyland. Oh, my God, they were so good. <laughs> yeah, they of course, I'm, I'm, you, know what, one of the, you know what the cooking recipe I really need to do on camera? Detroit Coney Island hot dog. I haven't found the correct chili recipe yet for that, but oh. when I do, uh -huh. we're gonna video that because you just got you got to be done a certain way to make it right. <laughs> uh, do it with or, a vegetarian dog too, and then I'll go. Along. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> Actually, since since you're really good with food, Iris, uh, yeah. what, what's your what's your take on the Japa dog? The what dog? The what? Uh, the, or the I believe that's what's called. Vancouver has them. One second, I have to. Did you say Java or Japa? Japa. Japa well, dog. J A P A D O G. I am completely in the dark with really? the Really? Yeah, I have never heard of it. Oh, I am shocked because it's like the number one thing in Vancouver, apparently. Okay. No kidding. Yeah, there's I'm there's like these, dog. there's like these uh like kiosks and, and like umbrellas everywhere that, that uh they sell Japa dogs all oh, over the place. Oh, the, the like food truck places. Yeah, like those food kind of ones. And everyone uh, like I had one once a long time ago, but uh I I don't remember much. <laughs> but uh, I, which is was bad. That good, was, it? was that good and not that memorable? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just memories and things. <laughs> Well, well, I'm sorry I can't help you with, uh, with that, so... 
No worries. But you no, know, hey, I, screwy. Yeah. You know what time it is? Oh, it's that time. It's that time. No! It is that time. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I, well, I it, love you're you You're not going to go yet. Okay. You're not going to go yet. All right. Okay. Because you, my lovely, get to ask me and Screwball a question. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. What to ask? Mm -hmm. Let me see. <laughs> wow. Um, gosh, I've just gone completely blank. Um, well, Screwy. Yes. You live in North Van? I live um, right on Beach Ave. It all oh, get out. Shut the <laughs> front door. All right, Dusty, do you know, do you know what Screwy Shut said? Shut up. He lives in the most beautiful part of the city. I know. The water. He keeps, he keeps putting up pictures out of his out of his gorgeous glass window out of his apartment. I, I, am, so, <laughs> I am so jealous. I, I, can't, I shouldn't be jealous because I live at Trout Lake overlooking the lake. Oh, the, you know what? I, I'll give you that. That's a really good scene right there, too. <laughs> you know, that's tit for tat. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful places, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, all right, Dusty, I'll ask the same question. Like, where, what kind of area do you live in? I, I live in the suburbs, pretty much, um, yeah. of San Jose, uh, oh. north, northeast area. Um, if you go a little bit north of me, you get into Milpitas. You go a little south of me, you get into San Jose proper. Yeah. Um, so I'm about 40 minutes from the Golden Gate Bridge. Maybe. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so you can take 280, which is a nice windy road up there. And because I have my motorcycle, I can go up in the hills over here. I can go to the foothills over here in Lake Tahoe. Oh, I can go geez. skiing in Lake Tahoe, or I can go down to Santa Cruz to the boardwalk, or I can go up to San Francisco, which I never do because people break into your truck all the time. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought of San, San Fran as just, just being a gorgeous kind of peace hippie kind nope. of town. from Ash <laughs> San Francisco has basically gone down the turlet. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I love um, the architecture there. Architecture's there... awesome, actually. Oh my we, gosh! We, 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 me and me and my girl go up there, and we we saw um, Rob Paulson and the Animaniacs guys uh, do a show um, at a place up there that was gorgeous. Um, of course, uh, went to see a play up there, which is awesome. Um, I go up there like once, maybe twice a year, just mm -hmm. basically because. It's a crush. I come from Michigan with lots of trees and things, so I'm more akin to go to Tahoe than I am to go to the city. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun place if you're going up there to do something. Right. Um, just to bum around, it can get boring a little bit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's pretty cool. Excellent. Yep. Sounds like you live in a beautiful place, and so do we. Yep. Right through it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with that, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of the program. I love you guys. Yeah, well, we're not quite out of here yet. We're going to give it a, a few seconds here. I want to remind everybody out there that we have this wonderful sponsor, Little's Toy Company, who give us a bunch of this stuff that we get to give to you for our charity. So if you want to go over to Little's Toy Company and pick up a Funko or any of this stuff, they got some new t-shirts coming out, um, check it out. There's some really huge, huge news coming out of them soon. I can't say anything about it. I know about it. I can't say anything about it. I'm vibrating with excitement about what they're doing, <laughs> but I can't say anything about it right now. Um, so keep your ears tease. open. Plus, we've got this beautiful t-shirt design done by Sabrina herself over at Tee Public and Redbubble. Stay brony, my friends, t-shirt, garage style. We're going to get some more uh, designs up for next year. Uh, but please buy one of these t-shirts. It supports the show. It supports everything we get to do for you. So thank you very much, everybody, for checking this stuff out. You can get it on tumblers. You can get it on all kinds of stuff. So check out Tee Public and all those places for your Stay Brony, my friends, swag. And I've got really exciting news about what's coming up next year for Stay Brony, my friends, swag. I also can't talk about it until it's done. But there you go. And I want to talk about Christmas. Yes, because we're going into the end of the year. We're going to have our Christmas Eve special again. Beautiful. About 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on this very channel, Candlelight Hill. We're going to open up that camera right there, and we're going to have Christmas. So if any of you people would like to join us, we're going to have a charity drive for Second Harvest Food Bank here in the Bay Area that always needs help. Um, there's always homelessness going on, and everybody needs a bit fed. So I've got a lot of wonderful people going to be donating a lot of wonderful stuff for you guys. If you show up and give us a couple of bucks during that uh, live stream, you'll be in for all kinds of things, like... 
this beautiful watch that Silver Slinger sent us, which is Doctor Who's. Um, I've also got a Kreber, Kreber Christmas CD coming that will be signed. I've got a ton of things, but one of the wonderful things is this beautiful scroll right here, which was given to us by Leakfish. This is the Create scroll that she had at all the different conventions signed by people to be given away, and these went for big bucks. This is number 10 of 10, the last one. So if you want a chance at getting this, come to our show and give a couple of bucks to Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, we would love to have you here for Christmas. Last year we opened all of our presents and we had eggnog and we had rum in the eggnog and we had more rum in the eggnog. Mm -hmm. And we did some other wonderful fun things like playing games on camera, like Cards Against Humanity and, <laughs> and other wonderful fun things. So if you got no place to be for Christmas, we'd love to have you. Uh, so come on by about 8 p.m. Christmas Eve. I'll come. I'm home from work about five, and we'll get everything set up um, after dinner, and we'll have we'll open presents and have Christmas carols. Maybe we'll watch some Christmas episodes of My Little Pony together. Um, anything goes. And then we're gonna do the same thing New Year's Eve. So be sticking around this year. Um, I'd like to thank Iris. You're very, very welcome, and thank you. Yes. Absolutely, for coming by, taking time out of her busy schedule of cooking. Ashley. What? Uh, Iris, you said that you have a website. Yes. Why don't you talk a bit about that website there, Iris? Oh, well, it's just, you know, your you know, run-of-the-mill website. Uh, it's got um, um, all kinds of interesting things on it, I, mm -hmm. I hope. So I invite anybody to come and visit irisquinn.com. Yes, that's where you can get this wonderful cookbook right here. Yes, you can, you and, can uh, and just... Say hi. And just say hi. If you want to say hi, just send her a message and she'll say hi to you. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Screwy for everything he does. Yeah. That boy right there. Amy, <laughs> my wonderful girlfriend. Lance Bubula, who came home from a procedure, which I can't talk about, but uh, he's upstairs, upstairs taking a nap, um, for doing everything he does because we couldn't do the show without him. Um, everyone busting their flanks over at Canalot Hill Network for giving us a place to be. Thank you very much. And everyone working on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic up there in Vancouver, overseas doing the animation, down in L.A. at Hasbro. Thank you all very much for giving us this wonderful show that we love to watch and analyze and do songs about and do animation about and all that stuff because we love it and we love you. Thank you very much. Um, and, of course, everybody out there in TV land who come every time we turn out that camera and make dang fools of ourselves. <laughs> every time you show up, I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, also, one other thing before we split... I am going to Michigan in January 13th through 19th to see my folks. The Metro Detroit Bronies have put together a bowling get-together on that Saturday, which I will be attending. It's at Royal Oak Lanes. If you want to check it out, check out the Metro Detroit Bronies Facebook page for the event. Um, I will be there. I'll be signing autographs. I'll have my cards with me. Um, all you guys, you want to show up and say hi if you're in the southeast Michigan area, I'd love to see you. Thank you very much. And with that... We're out. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night. Good night. See ya. Bye. Christmas Eve. Bye. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.